Cornwall is a place that I haven't visited since I was a little kid. Last year, my dad turned 60 years old and I booked us a private boat trip heading out from Lou shark fishing. I was accompanied by Tom Warren and he headed out on this big long journey with us, multi-species fishing and we hooked up with Jordan from Bude and he took us down filming on his local canal and I tell you what, it was a mega trip. Shark on there, boy! <laughs> For the first part of the holiday, me and Tom traveled four and a half, five hours down from where we live to Bude to meet up with Jordan. And on arrival, I was quite taken back with just how stunning the location was. Um, it really was a complete mixture of scenery. You had a part of the canal which was two basins, very urban, and then it headed inland for about a mile and a half, which had some really rural spots bit of something for everyone. So after meeting Jordan, he walked us to the local post office where we could get our fishing licenses, fishing permits, sorry, for the day, um, which was something like a fiver, which was, um, well, not bad, is it? And then we headed off doing a little bit of stalking for the day. The weather wasn't really good for stalking, to be honest. It was very overcast and we were getting little showers here and there. So um, the water clarity was really murky as well, which obviously didn't help matters whatsoever. But we thought we'd give it a go and we headed upstream all the way to the end where there's a big old lock. Um, and that is the end of that section. And we found a few carp grazing there and it wasn't long before I hooked into my first fish. Jordan and we've got one already so yeah yeah of course we will do yeah goes oh, back don't let it die no, no definitely right. not thank you so uh, yeah as I was saying first one out the little bude canal and uh, yeah hopefully a few more today as well so I think the plan is to um, put some bait in somewhere and we'll jump on here for the night but yeah not a bad start you got one boy. Alright, <laughs> uh, let's get her back. Have a few shots and we'll get her back. Nice. Here we go. 
makes the old uh, long drive worthwhile once you uh, get off the mark, doesn't it? Come on then, Tom, hurry I'll up. Really want to fish you in there now. <laughs> After I slipped that fish back, there was still a few carp milling about in the uh, in the pads and a few on the far margins underneath the vegetation. So we thought that we could probably nick another bite there. But that was soon ruined by um, a few ladies come down in the, on their body boards or surfboard things, I don't even know what you call them, but you stand up on them. So the fish weren't hanging about after they crashed through all of that. So um, sort of ruined our chances a little bit. But that is canal fishing for you. You know, you never know what's um, coming around the corner. Boats, people, dogs, you know, it, it happens on places like this. Um, so, you know, we're on holiday. We decided to go for a bit of lunch, have a pint and chill out. So after recharging, we decided to have a little wander around and we come across um, Jordan's local tackle shop. And the bloke, Rob, that owns this shop he is really really helpful i can't stress enough how much he um, helped us out on this trip i've always wanted to catch a big wrasse and to be honest i haven't got a clue what i was doing and so we headed off into his shop and he really did help out he told us exactly what we needed to be using and then he went one step further and he said if we come back the next day five o'clock and he'd take us down to his secret little rasp spot, which I tell you what, was an absolute buzz, but that'll come later on in this video. After leaving the local tackle shop, absolutely buzzing for the next day, we thought we'd return to the canal, to the spots where we're gonna be doing the night. And this is where I struggle sometimes in my carp angling. I can't sit still. I really can't. I can't put my rods out during the day and just sit behind it, not knowing if there's any fish there. Um, we had seen fish all on this section all, the, all day, really, you know, going up and down. So obviously there were fish there, but I like to always know what I'm fishing for and what's in front of me. Um, so I went off stalking and Tom and Jordan set up and literally chilled out for a little bit for the afternoon and that was the best tactic because these guys started getting amongst the fish and left me behind. Well, it doesn't really matter, mate, does it? No, no, not at all. As long as you get it in. No, I was, I was mainly hoping that you two would catch, and you've, you've definitely done that now. Yeah, mate. <laughs> it's taken me so long to get my rods on the bottom, mate, that's the only problem. That was some dodgy <laughs> old scooping. <laughs> but is it in the net? It is. Good man. That is a good one, isn't it? That's a nice. I think that's it. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Biggest thing in the pond, eh? Well, for now. Could have saved it for us, couldn't he? It's alright. We'll Jack was saying he was like, yeah. he's saying so he wants a bigger, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah, man. A few, yeah. It is, mate. I I 
I'll take that. One of the biggest fish in the stretch. You know, Jack and Tom have been catching. I ain't really been catching today. I was just you know, mainly focused on them catching, so I was happy by that, but I flicked the rod out. And, uh, yeah, this is it, <laughs> Well happy. <laughs> Look at that then. Well over the moon. about that, Rob? Top lad. That will do. He buzzing about that. That will do, donkey. Yeah, well unexpected, but yeah, that's the result. Nice, man. Well done. There's nine there, man. Ooh, sorry. That's all right. I didn't see you then. Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, that fish is nice. Nice scale, yeah. There we go. Finally went back to the method that I like on the bottom instead of all this bread bomb business. Don't know what that's all about. And uh, yeah, lovely scaly little mirror to show. Let's go get, get some bigger ones, eh? Well, what a first day down on the canal. I didn't quite think we was going to be having that many fish. I knew it was absolutely st like stacked full of them in here, but you know, whenever someone says that, you don't think you're going to be get catching a few, do you? But yeah, we were on five altogether so far. Jordan's had the big gal, which was a real buzz. We really did buzz off that for him, um, especially as he uh, put in the graph with us today. He's made it happen and he actually caught one. So yeah, it's been good. Night under the stars. Don't think we're due any rain, and uh, gonna kick back now, have a beer, and uh, enjoy a light, pleasant night on the canal. And then tomorrow we're off wrasse fishing, but hopefully a few more before the morning. Oh, brilliant! Mm. Fucking brilliant! Oh, says, oh yeah, it's just clouds. All, all, yeah. all the rain's gone now. Do it rain down in Cornwall. <laughs> now, look at it, it's bloody raining. I've got to go get my brolly, which is miles out of the I literally just said in that video bit out there, I go, not doing any rain, and then now look at it. Yeah. Nice. I wouldn't mind that one, mate, to be fair. It comes out quite a bit, especially up this end, so. Does it? Yeah. Is that the one you wanted? That is the one I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so after he slipped that back, I made sure my rods were positioned perfectly with the bushwhacker pole on the spots and then we sat down, had a few beers, took in the scenery, had a takeaway and slept under the stars right on the side of the canal. When I woke up in the morning, Tom had had a fish and Jordan was just sticking back, a small common, and he also had a lovely little leathery one. Um, real cool character. That's the thing, isn't it, on rivers and canals? They're all full of character. You never know where they've come from, what's happened to them. They just have a harsh life, don't they? Especially living that close to the sea. It's really brackish, so you do get a few odd shaped calf and, you know, proper cool little characters, like I said. And Tom also added to the uh, collection that morning. He had a beautiful old common, so yeah, check this one out. Look at that. He's talking about getting a bigger one. And a first common. Lovely. Jack, what's going on mate? <laughs> We're having bites. <laughs> You're sitting over there <laughs> snoozing. Oh yeah, take the piss out of Jack time, is it? That's a nice comment, man, to be fair. Lovely.
after doing the video and doing the snaps for Jordan and Thomas Fish, I couldn't help but think, what's going on? You know, this canal is packed full of fish. These guys are catching and I haven't caught a single fish off the deck. Um, so I reeled in the rods, checked my hook baits, checked my rigs, perfectly fine. No weed, not hung up on anything whatsoever. So I, instead of fishing seriously tight to the bank, I brought it in a couple of feet and it wasn't long before my rod was absolutely ripping off and I couldn't believe my luck. The night previous, Jordan was showing me pictures on his phones and I actually recorded him showing me it of this really nice scaly one that he had in there, sort of low 20s. And when I'm playing it, he's going, I know what fish that is. And it was it. Well, <laughs> this morning I was uh, starting to think I was doing something wrong. Uh, the, the boy's been hauling all night and yeah, I'd had no action at all. So, replaced the rods this morning and uh, didn't take long. And I got this lovely old mirror. Look at that. Jordan was only showing me pictures of this one last night on his phone. And uh, <laughs> now she's just rolled over the neck cord. I'm well chuffed about that. Look at look at the scales on it. Lovely fish. That's been a wicked little trip so far as well. We've had some good fish between us, so it's been worth the drive. Right, let's get her back. The canal was a success for all oh, of us. We thought we'd end it on a high note. We'd pack up. We'd go for a little van sort out. And then we'd, uh, we'd go and see what else Bude had to offer before we was gonna head to the Rass spot later on that evening. Um, we decided to do a little bit of mullet fishing in the estuary that, um, that runs straight through the middle of Bude. We also tried having a go for the bass, but um, yeah, we, we had no luck. I don't know if you guys have ever fished a mullet, but they are extremely hard to catch. And I do really wanna catch one, I do. Um, but yeah. We failed, we failed miserably. Like I said, we had to go for the bass. We had to go off the beach um, and, you know, we're just chancing it really. Nothing happened, but we got to see a few beautiful sights. Um, and we just waited for that clock to hit five so we can meet up with Rob and he could take us down to this secret wrasse fishing spot. And that's exactly what we done. Been buzzing to go rat fishing all day. We're going now. Look at it. Oh, oh, that's all. That's all, Shagger. <laughs> we met up with Dad. He met us at the spot, and Robert told us, you know, that um, that my dad was going to be all right getting down the cliff. He's a lot older than uh, than the rest of us, so. Uh, but you know, he's always up for a challenge and. Um, it was a bit of a walk down to uh, down to the area where we was going to fish, and none of us had been there before, obviously except Rob. Um, so we didn't really know what we was letting ourselves in for. I have seen it a few years ago on one of the Nash videos. I can't remember what, and I remember them saying that it was a bit of a, a bit of a climb down, but 
once we got there, once we walked through and passed all this beautiful scenery, it really was picturesque, we came to this spot where we had to climb down to the rocks. Look, it's what I've been dreaming of. <laughs> Half an hour ago, <laughs> when we was driving near the, in that rain. It's pissing it down, wasn't it? I did not look think it. it was going to be like this. Fuck, I'm carp fishing again. I always do shit like this when I'm carp fishing. This is what I do all the time. Crash through shit like this. That's why I need to set a wade, Jordan. I know. Are you sure? I think all of us, when we stood up there and looked down, we thought, oh my God, like, how are we going to get down there, let alone Dad? But, um, you know, we're all game. We thought we're here now, we may as well have a go. And to be honest, it was pretty stupid thinking back at it because if one of us had fallen down there, there's no coming back, you know. You, it's pretty much a death drop, I reckon. Rob went first, showed us how to do it. And then it was my dad's turn. And he got literally about a quarter of the way down the cliff and had a stumble. And all of us were absolutely shocked. We thought we was gonna watch him plummet down the cliff. Um, but luckily he managed to get a bit of grip and, and, and stop himself. But <sighs> I'm still getting anxious about it now, as you could probably tell. But when we were down the cliff and we all got to fish for Ras, and that is exactly what we went for. I remember Rob saying to us, you watch, three casts, I'll have one. Second cast, he's hooked into this remarkable little ass. The man promised us a ass. Oh, mate. There she is. Only a little one. Plenty more like that to come. Second cast. Yes, man. Yeah, it's worth a death, death trap on the way down. I don't know what it is. I I love these fish. They are beautiful. They're full of different colours. And this one was like a dark brown one. It wasn't the most picturesque one, but I got to see it, and it was beautiful. And to be honest, after we slipped that rasp back, we had to head back up the cliff um, because it was getting dark. We'd fished for a couple of hours and no one had had anything else, just Tom getting cut off all the time on the cliffs. But apart from that, um, you know, safety comes first and we had to get everyone back up that cliff before it was dark. So um, that is exactly what we've done. And I will be heading to Cornwall again to catch some of them big old wrasses. But we all just want to say a massive thank you to Rob, who owns that fishing shop in Bude. We couldn't have found or got to that spot without him, and we couldn't even have fished for him without knowing the knowledge that he passed on to us. So, um, like I said, thank you very much, Rob. And everyone, if you're ever in Cornwall or ever in the Bude area, go in, have a chat with him, because he is more than willing to help you out. Change your clothes, waterproofs on, and we headed down to the harbour in Loon. And we met up with Skipper from Cornwall Fishing. He has the fastest boat in the town, and I was super shocked at how quick it was. But we boarded, and we headed out to the spot early morning to make sure that we beat all the other boats there, and hopefully catch a shark or two.
All we wanted from this trip was to see a shark, experience one of us playing the power of one of these fish. And um, a couple of hours have passed of us playing around catching mackerel and other species and the rod has ripped off. Um, Dad was into his first blue shark at the trip and yeah, the power is pretty incredible. Shark on there, boy! <laughs> When it's pulling. Take time. Yeah. It's not a wing. It's He's had enough. Something coming up. This time of year, shark fishing isn't like, really productive. It's a little bit early, um, but after dad catching one, me and Tom were really happy just to see it, to be honest. Unhooked his one by the side of the boat and swam away safely. And um, yeah, we weren't really expecting anything else to happen. And then next thing, you hear Skip, shark on! And it was my turn. Right, you heard, I don't want me to mobile. Mobile, 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 mobile. Like a carp, mate. My fish, he said, was probably around 70 to 80 pound. I think that's what he said. And mine wasn't so frantic as Dad, so we boarded it. And me and the old man got to get that picture of what we actually went down there for, you know. It's all about making memories, isn't it, on these trips? And that is exactly what happened. Um, but I just wanted Tom to catch one whilst we are down there. You know, these trips are expensive um, and you know, if there's three of you on that boat, you want all of you to catch, don't you? And two of us had done that. And a few hours had gone past, and the um, and the other guy that worked on the boat, he was looking at the weather, and it was starting to brighten up, and he said, it's not looking good for it. Um, these conditions, it sort of kills it. Next thing, you know, <laughs> I've never heard a tape like this before. It was absolutely melting off. These big old reels, proper steaming off and um, yeah, I was, it was probably one of the best moments of that uh, that trip was watching that rod buckle over and Tom hitting into his first shark. Is that like boot? It was like a shark. That's what we came to Cornwall for. No, you've got the, you've got the, the website behind you.
That's what I mean. So, I got that. But Tom's waiting for the big one, like he said. I'm starting to think we're working a weapon. You always think that, you, while the baits are in, you've always got a chance at this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep your odds there now, so if it wants to go again, it can go. Yeah, where it is. Yeah. Oh, he's off. Oh, oh, oh my god. Out. Once they get that leader in their hand and we see it come up, we saw it was a good fish and then it got off, but apparently that counts as a catch in sea fishing. So to be honest, and we'd much rather see those fish get off at the side of the boat and swing back and the Smiles all round. <laughs>